Hey guys, Joshua Peterson with Peterson Electric here today. I'm um, trying to talk up a little louder on these videos. I've had a few complaints about not being loud enough in the video. Uh, sometimes I have my partner with me to film them, sometimes I don't. Um, the other thing is I'm going to start just listing that the date of this video is January uh, 3rd, 2018, so you know kind of when the date is. So if things don't look good to code, then you'll understand based on the code cycles every three years we just started in 17 of june of this year a new one of last year huh. so we're good till the year 2020 so that way if you have any questions just think first before you bomb me with a bunch of questions or uh, comments or insults just understand that the video is based upon that timing um, anyways today is going to be listed and labeled which is another thing i'm going to do is tell you what it's about um, we're going to be talking about how to have a new switch put in another location without cutting drywall whatsoever. So <clears throat> let me see if I can give you a little bit of an overview. This is a kitchen area, a kitchenette and apartment area, and the basement of a walkout basement. That's kind of the living room. As you walk in, that's the door going upstairs. And then this is another door coming in from uh, a, a walkout basement. So this is the stairs up here. Okay, so the complaint is, is that I want to switch right here, and I, it's originally over there. What we could see by drywall years ago is they filled this wall in and put a door, um, because the door cutoff used to be right here, and the stair was open. So what they've done is somebody filled it in, and they said, can we move this without damage? So yes, we can do this today without damage to move from here to here. Now, as you can see, this is the original box which is nice because we actually had a, do, a two gang for even a single switch but it allowed us to have the uh, box volume for all these lumicons this is another part of the aluminum that we're talking about in copper so keep in mind guys that um, article 314 talks about your box fill which is amazing it talks about hickeys and devices and wire count but it does not talk about spark rings as well as gfci depth the newer dimmer depth uh, the AFCI, GFCI depth with the little CTs on the back, as well as it doesn't talk about the depth of and volume of any of your cubic on the Lumicons. So keep that in mind that I think that needs to be an addition update on the code. This is an older box, but it's not a metal box, so it'll fit everything. Um, what I originally had right here was this simple switch. Okay, That's just a single pole paddle white um, pass and Seymour switch. So we are going to go from today to put in this right here. It's made by Lutron, and this is a dimmer. It comes with the kit. Okay, so I already replaced that, and it comes with the kit right here. Okay, that Lutron kit allows us to have a wireless control. We cut in a box over here. There's no wires. We cut in a box, put on a plate, and we're going to put in this device. This is made by Lutron. See how flat it is as a sticky pad in case you want to use it as a visor in your car, which I've done many videos on that as well, or jobs, but I should do a video for that. Um, so basically, when you drive up, you can hit that and your lights will turn on. It is going to work on these two can lights, so you have to be attentive to what we're turning on. You cannot do ceiling fan rated fans and fluorescent light fixtures with this. It'll blow it out. This is... A C.L design Lutron for that dimmer, so it'll do halogen LED and incandescent, but it has to be dimmable rated and on Lutron's website. So anyways, we're going to put this in over here, and then we're simply going to hit this button here and watch our cans turn off. Boom. If you don't want to do that in the wall, no problem. Put it on your coffee table and I can get you a little mount that's like a paperweight and it's metal and it's white. It's got an L-shaped design, very sweet looking. It'll slip right in that little piece right there. You take out that plastic piece. Um, other than that, the tools that you're gonna need for today, very simple. You need a tape measure, just to measure up the wall to match the other side, of course, side to side. Then you needed a swivel, which stabs right in the wall. Peel it around, make sure you don't have any studs. You could use a stud finder, but I love that because it'll truly feel anything as I move around. Then you're gonna need a simple Sharpie to outline your box, a cut-in box, a keyhole saw, and some strippers. 
I like to use my Klein little stab screwdriver to help take out the back side of my switch right here. Okay. So anyways, that's really all I needed besides a swivel to put back on the plate. And I do buy these nice little plates. I love these plates. It's a single gang or single opening, two gang, and it's a decor link. I use that on a lot of my gas range uh, remods so I can take out the 240, put it in a 110. Love using it for that purpose since it's behind the range, uh, especially if I can't get a dedicated circuit for a quarter amp on a gas range that has just running a board. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I'm gonna try this year in the 2018 to help you guys out with these videos a little bit better. I will help you a little bit more with the tool knowledge, the purpose of what we're doing. I will not tell you how to do everything. That is some of the trade secret. Um, beyond that, some of the other electricians should know how to do that. And keep in mind, I do not want these videos helping people that do not know how and what they're doing. So we are there to help, but uh, we're also there to tell them what we can do for them without destroying their wall beat them switch leg. Just so you know, I've done a lot of these already. I've done stairways. I've done four-way, five-way systems in homes. I've done it where um, I had a vaulted ceiling inside of the great room that I could get a switch upstairs easier uh, with a loft area for a smoke detector to come down, but I could not get it down the wall without destroying because they had, you know, 15, 20 foot of wood going up. So that wireless switch will work wonders in a lot of situations and I'm very familiar with using it. So anyways, guys, hopefully that helps out some of you electricians that bump your head on the wall on this stuff. Um, I love to find those uh, idiosyncrasies and those odd parts that not everybody does or knows about just to help you guys because uh, I know how it is in the field. So anyways, guys, take care.